December 18th of 2013, Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning had seen its day come and go. It officially was closed down by EA Mythic. Now this video isn't on reminiscing about what was, rather it is focusing on what is. And that is Return of Reckoning, which is Warhammer Online's private server that launched in 2014 with support by several developers who work on both the development of the server physically as well as financially keeping it afloat. Now if you have never played Warhammer Online during its retail days and you're just now jumping into Return of Reckoning, then you're starting off at the game's most stable and closest point to being balanced it has ever been. The player base is also quite lively nowadays, especially on weekends with the population often getting close to the server cap which is 3500. Albeit there does seem to be some issues with the servers during these high cap times, but still a blast once they're flattened out. Now I'm going to go into detail about the game, its selling points, as well as I'm going to reveal five things that you should know about the game before you do start playing. There is a lot to enjoy about this game and quite a bit to cover, so why don't we kick it off with... Between the Destruction and the Order, there are 24 different classes, with each class having three different talent trees for specific types of playstyle. For example, this Black Orc that I'm playing right here is best utilized as a sword and board tank, but if you would like to go with a two-hander for scenarios, or maybe even for some open RVR roaming, then you could do that as well. Healers have a DPS tree, a uh, melee DPS will have tankier trees as well as AoE trees, and so on and so forth. When it comes to the the uniqueness of classes from the order to the destruction they will vary slightly with respect to having their own sort of special pizzazz if you will but they often shadow each other and what I mean by that is that let's take my bright wizard here for for example it is very similar to destruction sorcerer but the bright wizard is better for AoE whereas the sorcerer is better for single target damage that doesn't mean you can't be good at doing high amounts of single target damage as a bright wizard or vice versa for a sword but the uniqueness of their classes will vary. The rest goes on for the classes such as Witch Hunters and Witch Elves, Slayers and Choppas, Squig Herders and Engineers, just to name a few. Each class will have its own unique abilities, but they will shadow each other depending on which faction that you choose. The best thing that I can say is to try out a couple of different characters in Tier 1 in order to get a feel of not only how the game plays, but also how those certain classes play. is actually home to a lot of content but its main focus is on pvp that does not mean that there's no pve in the game actually some of the best end game gear comes from doing the six man dungeons that are in the game sure it was never the game with industry changing pve mechanics but it did introduce public quests to the industry which also gives you good experience and gear for those who are trying to level up if we're talking about the meat and potatoes though the game has some of the best pvp in an mmo that i have ever played and with tons of new players and both of the tiers of open world rvr it's filled with action for those who don't know uh what open world rvr or realm versus realm is it's pretty much where the order and the destruction the two different factions go head to head in open world zones to capture objectives which would be like these flag points bring resources back to the forts in order to rank them up so depending on the level one two three you'll be able to get ballistas, rams, and cannons in order to use these during a siege to take down the other realm's forts. Within sieges, players show up to the defense or to the offense of these forts, so basically if one realm is able to siege a castle properly and take over the rest of the points that are in the zone, and now that that zone is essentially locked, there's going to be a roll off for bags. So if you have been able to participate more and have RNG on your side and get a good roll, the better the bag, the better the gear that you're going to get. Now that gear is going to vary from tiers of ranking for your PvP rank or your renown rank rather, but I'll go more into that later on in this video. The game has 40 levels, which for a new player that's actually pretty easy to achieve. Um, it might take some time depending on how you look to achieve that but nonetheless it's pretty easy and even if you're doing just pvp it's still pretty easy but the game also like i was saying has pvp ranks or renown ranks and there's 80 of those when i talk about these pvp ranks 
there's different ways of being able to level them up whether it's in scenarios or these quote-unquote battlegrounds uh, or doing open world pvp scenarios will give you emblems and open world pvp will give you medallions and there's different gear sets for scenarios as well as there's different gear sets for open world pvp now there's a lot to this game and there's a lot to learn there's a lot to have fun with and there are a lot of people to have fun with which brings me over to my next point When playing through open world RVR and scenarios, the more that you do, the more you're going to be rewarded for. For new players, this sounds obvious, but very quickly you're going to see the amount of people that AFK when sieging and trying to capture objectives in open RVR. If you really have to AFK, then do so, but there are many times when there's a siege that goes on for hours and hours because of a bunch of people that just AFK in the middle of the pack, and that doesn't really help anybody out because the more you you participate the higher that your contribution medal will be when rolling for the bags once you lock down a zone so the more you participate the better chances of you getting better gear and it just makes more sense and you're really just gonna have more fun with the game instead of just afking and trying to get a high roll in order to get better bags what i learned about mmos in general through the years is that the best way you can enjoy them is by mixing up what you look to do in that game. In this game, you can have fun with scenarios, open world RVR, public questing, questing, dungeons, and so much more. To keep it fresh, try everything out that the game has to offer. If you start to just queue for scenarios day after day, it kind of gets very repetitive, and that might turn you off, so the best thing that I can say to you is to try everything that the game has to offer in order to keep it refreshing. I mentioned that you have a separate character level from your PvP level, which is called Renown Rank. Now, if I were you, I would not let one start to overtake the other by quite a bit because it will start start to affect the gear that you're going to get when you choose to do PvP. The gear you get in these bags and the gear that you can purchase using emblems and medallions will require a certain renown rank, so you don't want to be level 40 with a renown rank of 1 or 5 or 10 because you will be severely undergeared for quite some time. And the same goes vice versa for your renown rank over to your level. A good rule to apply is when you hit level 40, I would say a safe renown rank is to be renown rank 40. The game has a ton of veteran and experienced players that are willing to help teach new players. So when it comes to sieging, capturing objectives in open RVR, and zerging together, there will be warband leaders that know the next moves. So be okay to follow them and listen to their orders. Eventually you will understand a lot more and you're going to pick up on the knowledge where you understand how to maneuver a warband that roams through an open zone trying to flank opposing warbands in order to sway the momentum towards your realm and who knows, maybe even at one point you'll be able to be that warband leader leading people into battle. Just like every other MMO, add-ons are going to help you a ton in this game. What you see me using is an add-on pack called Vinny UI, I believe is how it's pronounced. Uh, I just altered it a little bit to my liking depending on the character that I'm using. Now this pack is what I believe most players use for their UI because it helps with a lot of the small things. You can see that as a tank I have the ability to guard people. The guard ability allows me to share damage with another person and it's very hard to know how far away you are without always knowing where that person is. So there's this guard add-on that I have that allows me to see exactly how far I am and whether or not I'm in range to be able to have the guard ability up. It's small things like this that will help you when you have an add-on that does that for you without wondering if you're already in there. So I would advise either get the Vinny UI or go on the forums and look up to get certain add-ons that are going to help you out with your experience within the game. I am sure both new players and those who are looking to get into the game are wondering what the end game looks like. It's a lot of what I touched on earlier with the open RVR, scenarios, dungeons and such, but at level 40 there are a couple of more things to do. At level 40 you can enter in city sieges and depending on if you win or not you can win a bag in the process and work towards getting the best in slot end game pvp gear. Also at level 40 scenarios become filled with just level 40s so the competitiveness of these scenarios are taken up quite a bit 
which is nice for those looking to push that competitive nature. At the time of recording this video, the first season of Ranked Scenarios are not out yet, but once those are implemented, that's also going to deliver another interesting factor into the endgame PvP content. Doing the six-man dungeons will also help you, especially for those looking to get better gear than the PvP gear while you're leveling up, as well as the tier 4 public quests for high levels in order to get the beast lord set which will put you into better gear for 40 so you're not so undergeared so i'd advise looking up a guide on how to get beast lord set in order to be pretty well equipped with some gear at level 40 or even before so aside from that it's doing more of what you were doing while leveling up just to a higher degree as you get better gear and you can start leading your own war bands and maybe even roam alone or as a duo with someone else in open realm versus realm yes 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 some of you may be turned off by a private server which i totally understand but the game is incredibly fun from the early tier 1 open realm versus realm and scenarios all the way to tier 2 open rvr if you're enjoying return reckoning let me know in the comments um and if you're new or you're planning on playing it soon let us know your name and the class that you might want to play uh so that maybe we can help you out hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you did please leave a like uh, subscribe for future content and I'll catch you guys in the next one.